Hey guys, welcome to week three of the Vehicle Modeling with Blender class. Um, it's been good catching up with you guys uh, in the pre-stream chat. It's been a very lively chat, so um, a lot of cool topics discussed. And uh, yeah, just fun catching up with you. A little hangout time before the class, uh, for the stream. So uh, today we are, well, at this point in the class, we're halfway done. And in theory, we should be finished with the exterior of our car model and ready to move to the interior. Uh, I wanted to, I want the class to be somewhat holistic, uh, even though as I say that, I realized that someone asked last uh, live stream if I was gonna do any of the like mechanical modeling, engine parts, axle, that kind of stuff. And no, so that was not included in my holistic class. But um, anyway, maybe I'll do that the next time. But uh, um, welcome and... Uh, um, yeah, how many times can I say welcome? Uh, yeah, the interior is what we're looking at this week. And let's see. Okay, we're live. Awesome. I see one viewer right now, which is kind of odd. I imagine there would be more. Uh, okay, cool. That Now we're up to 19. Awesome. Sorry for that, but... Yeah, uh, now let's get right into it by looking back at week two, okay? It was a really great week. It was an action-packed week, a lot going on, a lot of, a lot happening in the community thread that was uh, really fun, including a bunch of submissions. So we've got a total of, I think, let's see, let me look real quick. How many total submissions? 32, which officially puts it at the top of participation for any of the three classes so far. So that is pretty neat. But um, among those submissions, I, I wanted to point out my favorite, which is my habits, uh, or my favorites, which is a habit. And uh, so first, Bach Post, you're modeling a conceptual hover bike sort of vehicle. And it's very cool from, from the start. The concept you picked was very, very interesting. Um, had that wow factor to it. And your progress with the... Uh, and well, I guess your exterior and interior, since it's an open open air vehicle, it's, you're kind of doing both. But um, the progress is really, really nice, right? So you, it's got that combination of um, what I've been calling crispiness, which is like really, really smooth surfaces, no visible or no to very little pinching or subsurface artifacts. And your edges are very tight when they need to be. And, um, but they also still have, you know, like the, the shading where you, we could see the highlight on the edge. So we know it's not like a, a flat polygon type of crispness. Um, but anyway, it's just, it looks like a very manufactured hard surface piece. And uh, the progress is great. It's a really cool model. Um, uh, I like the detail that you added to certain areas like this, this gun, or I think it's like a ray gun, laser gun, something. Um, but that was really cool how you took a small bit of the concept and fleshed it out. You asked for help and someone gave you that help. Like they, uh, someone I think even modeled the thing in their own interpretation and sent you a screenshot as a way to say, hey, may maybe try this, um, which I thought was super legit. You don't get advice like that every day. Um, but uh, yeah, great job, Bach. Really, really impressive stuff. I love to see how this is coming along. Uh, below that we have Jake Carosi, which you are in the chat. So hello, Jake. And Bach, you're here too, so hello both of you. Um, but your your uh, truck model, I loved it. I, I simply loved it. It's one of those classic 50s types of ve type vehicles with the, where the style is very bulbous, very, very round. For some reason, they were all about that back in the day. And um, almost kind of like a cartoony sort of aesthetic, which I'm kind of getting in a rabbit trail, but anyway. Um, but when it comes to modeling those ty that type of bulby, curvature, it can be very difficult to maintain the very smooth surface. Like uh, I think of the, the hood of your, of your truck, like cutting this construction line, separating the hood from the body, that can actually be very difficult to maintain the smoothness um, whenever you cut those lines. And you've done that and you've done it very, very well. All of the details you've incorporated as well. Like, so these smooth shapes I was talking about can give the, the vehicle a simplistic look but then when you see all the little um, uh, intru um, indentions and extrusions like around this, uh, this wheel, like they're very, very subtle, but um, there's a little gap. Like it's that, f that uh, there's four little gaps around the wheel 
that you almost could miss, but like you went in there, you got really close, you added that detail. You also modeled the Chevrolet logo like completely accurately, which is you didn't have to do that. You could have skipped that, you could have cheated it, but you went all the way with the detail. Anyway, really, really good work there. Um, and then Martin, uh, Martin Leeson, I'm not sure if you're here, but, but even though you're not finished with this model, as soon as I saw you post your first work in progress images, I mean, I was very impressed by the level of curvature complexity that's going on. Now, I think this is a BMW vehicle that I, I feel like I've seen in real life before, but never was able to appreciate how complex the curvature is. Like, there's wild stuff happening in here um, that you're just achieving very, very well. You're maintaining the smoothness. You're, you have that hard edge, the hard edge quality. And I just really want to see this thing finished. Um, really, really impressive. I, I, I never was able to appreciate the complexity of the surface um, until I saw this. So uh, even though it's not finished, like it really stuck out to me as being one of the top models. Um, so good job. And then Tebow, I mean, the level of detail you're putting into this truck, this Mack truck is just cool. I'm, you know, it's, it's the stuff that modelers get excited over that we salivate over the level of fine detail, all the rivets and bolts and um, the tire tread you nailed. Like I, I don't see too many I feel like I don't see too many people put that level of, of attention onto the tread of tires, but you've done that and uh, really, really impressive stuff. So great job to the four of you. These are the, these are the, um, the cars that just kind of stuck out to me uh, a little bit more. In general, there was a lot of great work and I have another page of honorable mentions, but even beyond the honorable mentions, tons of good work by a lot of people in the class. So really want to give you a thumbs up on that, on the effort all around. Um, it's very cool to see people um, doing this quality of work. Uh, now, in the honorable mentions, Mr. Dojo, I really want to see you finish this this uh, truck. It's got such style and based on, I mean, the, the viewport screenshot, it looks smooth as silk. I see no evidence of pinching or anything. So this is a very crispy model. I want to see uh, that finished. And um, Agaton, Agaton, I'm not sure, you kind of came out of nowhere. I don't remember seeing anything from you until you posted this this homework. And it's a very cool concept plane, but it struck it struck me that that you just showed up with this thing. And um, yeah, did a really good job. Really interesting details, cool color scheme. Um, so having that shader going the extra mile. Um, yeah, this one stuck out to me. William, you're doing a concept tank, but one that you're kind of making up as you go which is a unique approach. As far as I can tell, you're the only one making it up without having any real reference. So um, you've been posting a lot of work in progress, which has you know kept us, at least kept me, but probably all of us like really engaged with your model. And it's turning out very well. Um, I did have some notes for you that I hope you've seen, but um, overall, like it's a really, really cool model. And I like to see you being so creative with it. Um, Iyad, Iyad, I'm not sure exactly if I'm pronouncing that correctly. But um, yours stuck out to me. It was one of the first submissions, um, but it's also the vehicle that, that I'm doing, the, the concept art that uh, Milan provided for us. So I think you're the only one doing it alongside with me, which is cool, you know. Um, I th thought you did a very good interpretation of it. I love the color scheme, the unique take on how this is being rendered and lit. So good job with that. And Jack, I also wanted to point you out because you were the first submission and um, I feel like I've seen a lot of your progress from the very beginning when the when the class thread was first submitted and you were talking about the model you wanted to make. Um, and you've been doing a great job. And and uh, I love this model. It reads very much like the toy transformer that you were referencing, that you created a super cool blueprint for. Um, and the only note that I had, which I hopefully you saw, was that the edges are maybe a little tight. I would, I would recommend spreading them out, softening them up a little bit. Um, but... I mean, the details that you've been able to achieve are really, really well done. And they're all subsurfed. Like these are very crisp details, but all modeled for subsurf. So great job. That's, those are my honorable mentions. Again, excellent work this week. It's been a thrill in the community thread to just see everybody interacting. And that brings me to how cool you guys are. I'm giving a kudos to this community because the level of critique, the level of advice, um, the level of encouragement. I really don't think I've seen many places in other communities or even, I mean, the level of, of this class, it's always been really good, but, but this is like, this is the next level. I mean, 
we're, we're seeing paragraphs and visual aids in response to people's questions, which is awesome. I mean, it takes time to do that. I know how much time that takes and it adds up. And so thank you for taking the time, the advice given, the encouragement. We've seen people bail from the class and then a wave of encouragement comes and they come back to the class. I mean, it's just amazing. It's humbling. I love this community. You guys are incredible. I think, I mean, you pay, that alone plays a huge part in our goal, a CG cookie goal, to be the best place to learn Blender, the best place to learn computer graphics. And that is that is on you, that is uh, credited to you. So thank you, um, keep it up. I mean, it's just, it's just amazing to watch as a teacher, very, very satisfying. So um, great job. All right, um, to the actual presentation, which is gonna be a short, like barely even a lecture today. Most of it's gonna be spent doing a demo, just actually modeling uh, the interior to the best of my abilities. Um, but yeah, the vehicle interior, that's what we're on for the week. And um, just, so I should also say that interior modeling is not something I think I've ever really done, frankly. Uh, I've modeled a Halo 2 Warthog back when it was popular, so that was I don't know, 2003, something like that, long time ago, and I modeled a Warthog, and unless I'm misremembering, that's the only vehicle I've ever, I've ever done. So the interior especially has been a, a, um, a learning experience for me. I'm like with you guys in it. Um, we also don't have a ton of content on CG Cookie, so this is an experimental week, an experimental topic, really focusing on the interior of vehicles. And so in practicing and researching, I've I've come to this approach of like freeform edge modeling. So it's the same kind of modeling that we see that we saw last week, um, but it's without explicit reference, explicit blueprints. Um, because if unless someone has found blueprints for the interior, I have not found blueprints. So I would guess that they don't exist. And some people don't exist. They, they're not common. Um, and several people in the class thread uh, mentioned that they couldn't find in interior uh, uh, blueprints. And it makes sense. It's a confined space. And being able to visualize that in orthographic, pers in orthographic views would just be very difficult to make understandable. And so we're left without a paddle in terms of... Um, that's, ex that's too extreme. We're left without explicit reference, so we only have implicit reference. So if you're modeling a, a real car, um, one that exists in reality, you can find photographs of the interior. That's gonna be your best friend. And unfortunately, you're pro you have two approaches. You can either set up a camera that matches the photograph perfectly. It corresponds to your exterior in 3D space perfectly. And then you can model from that perspective and, that, and if you are able to set that up, you'll get the most accurate interior that I think is possible. Um, unfortunately, that's gonna be a very imperfect um, process to get there. You're gonna need the, the right focal length of the camera, which I don't know how you'll find that information. So um, that to say, I don't really recommend it. Um, it's, it's gonna be too much of a hassle and it's not gonna, I just don't think you're gonna get to the, the result that you want as quick as you, you want to. So that leaves us uh, a very trans, translative, translation heavy approach where we're going to look at reference and, and conform it to our model. So it, it's a very exploratory process. And I think that's a positive um, in a way because interesting shapes can start to happen if you're a little more loosely with your interpretation. Um, which maybe doesn't work. It, it works for me because I'm doing a concept vehicle. It maybe doesn't work for your explicit vehicles, but um, um, for yeah, for your explicit vehicles, you, you know, you'll want to probably be as accurate as possible. But with concept vehicles, you know, we are a little. It enables us, enables us to be a little more free and flexible in our interpretation. And sometimes shapes can just happen as you're modeling. You start moving your edges and, and placing them certain ways where it doesn't make sense going in, but then all of a sudden it clicks like, oh, I get I get this cool shape now. So that's kind of a fun part of it. Um, it is very rewarding, um, in my opinion, this type of modeling, modeling the interior, this free form edge modeling. Um, it is more, I would say more work, more time consuming. Um, in my experience, uh, you have to use your brain more, but, but it is very rewarding because of those things. So 
Um, and and what made me want to do an interior in the first place was uh, this this image from uh, Roman in our gallery. I showed it before in the class, but the quality of this interior it was just struck me as like this is cool. This is something we need to try and model as a community. So I want to model it as well. Um, and and it is a very rewarding effort to do the interior. But this is what made me think that it it was worth pursuing. So it's rewarding. The cons, you know, we've explained no explicit blueprints and that that means we can't do that fun connect the dots type approach that we did last week with the exterior where, um, yeah, just, I think you know what I mean by connect the dots, uh, making it look right in both, in all the views is kind of this connect the dots game. Um, another con is the fact that it is a confined space in the interior. So it can be cumbersome navigating around and just a perpetual sort of annoyance, um, as you go. So that's, that's a bummer. Um, also, there's this concept that I've, I've, I ran into head on was uh, think, always thinking logically. So when you don't have blueprints that tell you that do the work for you of saying how big the wheels are compared to the rest of the body, how where exactly is the rear view mirror placed? Um, where does the door open? You know, like all these things, you don't have to think about them. They're just there in the blueprint. When you don't have a blueprint, you have to be thinking like a designer. You know, you have to think. I, like when I started to model right from the start, I, I put the dashboard in first and and uh, I had to start thinking like, well, where where does this sit in relation to the chair? Like when the per where, how does the person sit in there? Like how high do the knees come? How far apart do the knees spread? Like, is it going to hit the dash? Like, where is the, the steering wheel? How big is the steering wheel? You get none of that information for you. And so you have to always be thinking about about those things. You have to think like a designer. How would a human sit comfortably? How would um, things be within reach and not it, surfaces not intersecting, all that kind of stuff. So uh, that makes it um, a, a big thinking process throughout the entire interior. And all this means it can be a slow process. Uh, I found it to be much slower than doing the exterior. Um, okay, so cool. I see now there's a question. So just uh, everybody should know this by now, but um, if you have a question, please just do the pre the prefix question, the word question in all caps, and then followed by your question. That'll help me spot it in the chat easily. And so thank you, William, for doing that question. Will you be providing a human base mesh or something so that we can more easily model the interior? I thought about providing a, a quick rigged human, but uh, I actually just use an armature. And I'm going to show you how I do that. Um, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. You just, you know, you don't have the, the extent of the the exact extent of the, the uh, body, but the armature provides enough information to get you close. And we'll talk about that and I'll show you how that works. But no, I'm not gonna be providing it. I, I think it's, I don't know, it's kind of a fun use of just the armature by itself. Um, the question comment is the new Fresnel. <laughs> oh yeah, because you always have to say Fresnel, Fresnel, Fresnel. Like it's this, I, for a long time I thought Fresnel was the magic piece of the puzzle that most people did not get that I didn't get for a long time. So yeah, Fresnel always, always said Fresnel in all my training. So, um, yeah, it's kind of the question thing, um, until we make a system where we don't have to do that anymore. Um, I don't think I'm missing other things, but by the way, like what's the chat to, we're already 16 pages straight active in here. I love it. Um, awesome. All right. So with that said, um, that's pretty much all I have as kind of like a, a preface to the workflow. Now we're just going to jump in and start doing it. Um, after we establish week three agenda, the goal, the, the initial goal, I'll say, is goal number one is to model the interior of your chosen vehicle, gaining experience with fine hard surface details in a confined space. Um, uh, then the pre-recorded courses to watch, which again, we don't have much of is the uh, cockpit lessons from, or chapter two of the introduction to hard surface modeling. And then the modeling a chair lesson from uh, interior uh, architectural visualization. So those are just like um, related, sometimes loosely related to this stuff, to the interior. But um, yeah, this is a particular hole in our, in our curriculum right now. Um, that is until the class, I guess, of uh, modeling the interior. But um, hopefully if you need some, some extra help, you can find it there. Um, homework assignment, model the interior of your chosen vehicle and post images or a sketch fab embed 
oh, well, the Sketchfab link because the embed's not working. Or I do want to give you this option uh, that Mr. Dojo is asking about. Fin you have the option, I want to give you the option to finish modeling the exterior and ignore the interior. Because uh, several people mentioned that it took a lot longer than they expected to model the exterior. And frankly, I gave you a week and, and maybe that was, that was uh, uh, being not generous enough with the time. So some of you were able to do it, uh, several of you were, but several of you were not able to do it. And, um, and I think it's important to finish the exterior. So if you would prefer to finish and polish off your exterior, get all those like fine details that, that you were missing, um, you're welcome to do that in week three this week. Um, now the way I'm gonna grade that, I just wanna avoid people like modeling 90% in week two. And then for week three, they finish the last 5%. Like, if you do that, you I guess you can do it, but I'm only going to give you, you know, 5% of points, so to speak. You know, um, maybe, like, it'll be a D to get you 10 XP points. I'm not going to give you full full credit for the week um, uh, compared to people who will do the entire interior if you're just doing a little bit to polish off your exterior. So with that in mind, um, I would appreciate if you do a before and after, if you go the route of the finishing the exterior po post, like, your week two progress, and then your week three, so I can just you know see uh, conveniently like how much work you've done on it. Um, but yeah, I I, uh, I think a lot of people would want to finish the exterior, um, and uh, yeah, I want you to be able to do that. I think I think that's going to be fun um, to see those really polished up. Uh, so cool. Um, any other questions before I start diving into the demo? Okay. Okay, Mo William, that's a good idea. Uh, model the interior this week and then polish the model after the class is over. That's a good idea. That's a good approach. Um, all right, no questions. Sweet. Feel free to ask questions as we go. But with that said, we are done with the demonstration and let's jump into Blender. So something that I kind of realized late, I haven't even showed you is my progress on the model. So uh, this is, where I got to pretty much finished with the exterior. Um, I did realize though, if I compare it to the model that Milan provided, um, I, I completely forgot some elements on the front and uh, I've just got to go back and add those, just a plain oversight. But I wanted to look at the two of them um, to compare like where the interpretation was a little differently. Uh, the blueprint was pretty clear in most aspects, especially considering that uh, as far as I know, he rendered the blueprints in a, in like a line art style uh, from the, the direct model. So it was a very accurate blueprint. Um, and because of that, like our models look very, very similar. Um, but we did not have to interpret some things differently. Like, for example, on his car right here, there's like this hole, but nothing is in the hole. And there was no information in the blueprint to suggest what could be in there. But, you know, looking through various sports car models, um, revealed that like these kind of intake vents are pretty common. So I, I threw a couple slats in there, a couple, several slats on each side of that feature. So we interpreted that differently. Um, I'll, uh, let's see where else. This piece is a little bit different um, where the wheel, the, uh, the wheel well, I, forget, I think it has a name, but I forgot what it's called. Someone mentioned it in the, in the thread, but this area is a little bit different. His is more rigid and straight. Um, mine's a little more curved. So uh, just a little di bit different interpretation on the bottom. There was very little info to define this shape. And now I can see looking at his model, he did it differently, um, but I simplified it. So anyway, it's, it's very close, very, very close, but there are some differences in, in interpretation. And I suppose this, this would happen if 10 people modeled this exact car from the same blueprints, we'd get slight uh, interpretation differences. And I think that's completely fine. I think that it's kind of fun to see how people interpret it differently. Um, let's see, one of the things I did want to mention as well is the presence of like, uh, I want to call it trash geometry, just because it's, it's only intention is to cover holes. So like you can see it in Milan's, uh, which is not even, it's not even modeled for smooth. It's pure uh, polygon models, but he just put this in there to to hide like the emptiness of the mesh kind of thing. 
Um, and so there's several areas. I think here's another example, like all these different pieces just meant to cover the holes. And so that's completely acceptable because when you render this, no one's gonna notice those features. They're very, very um, low priority features, but they do need to be there because otherwise, you know, if, if this wasn't there, you'd see this at the bottom and that looks terrible and, and tacky. So um, just to cover those holes is a good um, shadow box. Yeah, that is what it's called. I completely forgot that's what it's called. Um, the shadow box geometry, thank you for that. Um, but that stuff is important. It, it just cleans up the model very nice finishes crossing T's and dotting I's so that when you render, you'll get appropriate shadows, hence the name Shadow Box. Um, thanks for that. Um, I'm a professional, I think. I, sw I think I am, sw I swear. Uh, any other questions that I'm missing so far? Question, is it an issue if I skip the last homework with sculpting a concept? Uh, I'll, I'm focusing more on actual modeling since with all the uh, pipelines used, I don't think it will need sculpting in the near future. Yeah, I mean, that's that's fine if you want to skip. Well, let me think about that. I th Yeah, I think that's fine. Like, I want you to be able to focus on what is most valuable to you. Um, it, it kind of throws a kink in, like, the grading, like, how I grade you. You know, that's the standards. So I'm going to say that's fine. Um, Again, just prove to me that like you've been somehow prove to me that like you've been doing a lot of work for week three, for week four in place of the concept. Uh, what I like about the concept example is that it, um, about focusing on that is that it is, again, that holistic kind of approach to where, uh, you know, it's a it's a pretty exciting frontier to start modeling concept vehicles because you can get very unique shapes. Um, and I want to show you that, but it shouldn't take that long. Like it, it's not an assignment that should take all week. Um, it should be just, you know, take a couple hours, play around with sculpting and then submit your assignment and then go back to polishing your vehicle if you want. But, um, that's kind of the idea of the sculpting. Let's see. Any other question? All right. No. Yeah. And, uh, Mr. Dojo, you, you make a point that um, sometimes you really do need to model the bottom. And you said for game models especially, and that's true because if the, I mean, if your car ever flips or something, like you definitely need the, the, the bottom. And some of you have been modeling very legitimately, like the axles, um, the shock absorbers, like all the stuff underneath the car. Uh, for this particular concept, um, I did not go with that. I just... Um, wasn't really a feature that, that needed to be there. Um, but like having this shadow box means that whenever I render it, you will get proper ambient occlusion on the entire bottom. If that was missing, then you know you wouldn't get correct ambient occlusion, uh, for example. So uh, anyway, it's just a nice, nice, nice finishing touch that you, that's pretty important. Um. Yeah, I was the future holds. I mean, unless you're concept sculpting vehicles, like there's probably not much reason to do sculpting with with car design. Um, but yeah, if you want to create unique vehicles that no one's seen before, concept sculpting is going to be a big asset. Awesome. So with that said, let's actually start modeling. I'm just going to get rid of uh, Milan's model. Um, and by the way, there was no cheating because he did provide only the subsurfed version. So, uh, you know, like I couldn't copy pieces uh, so in case you thought I cheated, but um, I'm being silly. All right, so with this car, to get started with the interior, if I hide these pieces, the, the windshield and then the roof, you'll see that we have nothing in the interior. It's wide open. Um, one of the features of this particular vehicle is that it's very uh, round, whereas not, you know, more cars are squarish than, than are this round. And so that provided an interesting challenge initially when I got started with the dashboard concept. So that's where I started and I'm gonna use another uh, artist's work. And this is from Nikolai Proskurin. He was kind enough, generous enough to uh, uh, grant me permission to use this art. Um, for, uh, for the class. And so since I'm doing a concept vehicle, um, I don't have the 
benefit necessarily. I could do it this way, but I didn't have the benefit of looking up photos to, to guide my, uh, my interior, you know, very clearly. Um, so I went on ArtStation and found his dashboard concepts. Then there's nine of them here. And they, what they have served really well to do is just to give me something to guide, like give some guidance. I'm, I'm not really copying any one of them 100%, but, but I am inspired by them. And to see how he sketches them out just provides that, that guidance. So um, in addition to this, the dashboard concepts, he also has a very interesting concept which is a like a 3D sketch, and he's done some interior. Uh, are they? Someone c can clarify. Are these called um, cabs? I think they're called that on trucks. You know where people sit is the cab, but I'm not sure if that's what it's called in a in a car. If someone knows, I would please enlighten me. I, I would love to call it the right thing. But I mean, this is a fascinating bit of concept art. It's like concept art 2.0, where um, it's not quite 3D. Well, it is 3D, but but um, if you look, they're just a bunch of lines that he has outlining contours. And as I discovered, a lot of the contours don't really make sense in perfect 3D space. So like, for example, you can see this one line or these two lines that run this way. Uh, they go up and around toward the back and that makes sense. But once they disappear down this curve, like it doesn't really make sense how they connect to everything else. And so in my opinion, that's an example of like a concept that doesn't 100% translate to 3D, but like, that's not really what it's supposed to do. This is just supposed to give an idea, some, some basic contours of what the interior looks like. And in that way, I've found it super useful. Um, and I'm going to be using that as well, uh, to guide the process, but in common, it, these in combination with each other have really helped me, uh, design like a somewhat custom interior for the vehicle. Um, and I saw a question real quick. Let me answer that. Question from Omar. Will it be uh, sculpting, sculpting, or more like kit bashing? It'll be more like... Wait, I'm trying to remember. When I did my research, it was a little bit of kit bashing, but not the same way that the sci-fi helmet was done. Like, it's more traditional sculpting, I would say. Um, at least that's what I did when I researched it. So it's a combination of kit bash and, and booleans and, um, just pure straight sculpting. Um, question, what is this 3d drawing app or is it just a weird material display? That's a good question. I'm not exactly sure how, uh, Nikolai set this up because it is a sketch fab embed. And I mean, I don't know of any special line art renders, so I don't know if this is a model with a unique transparency material, but um, I don't really even know how he created it. I know that there's like VR sketching apps that kind of do the same thing or a similar thing, but um, I've never used those before, but I don't know how he created that, frankly. Um, grease pencil is probably a good, a good, a good approach to, to explore uh, for doing that in Blender because it can draw, you know, 2D lines and 3D space, that kind of thing. But... So this, I'm using this 3D concept and I'm also using the dashboard concept. Uh, if you're doing a real car, just find some photographs and that will essentially serve the same purpose. Um, all right, let's get to work. The first thing I'm going to do is load my artwork, the dashboard concept. I can't load the Sketchfab in here, but I can load up this one. All right, and the one that I found myself gravitating toward was this guy right here. Um, so that's, I think, what I'm going to start with to try and block out the, the dashboard shape. Um, and I'll also say that I'll try and spend, let's say, an hour blocking stuff out, trying to get general shapes. And then uh, someone asked in the thread to, to talk about sculpting a leather seat, so I want to cover that. And um, also I need to show using the grab brush. I, um, I'll get to that, but a lot of times I'll use the grab brush, uh, to like move parts of my, my polygon mesh around. I'll show you what I mean. Um, awesome. So we're looking at this particular concept in general. That's, that's going to be my main one, but all these different angles provide valuable insights. So I, I really like that he has nine examples here. That's just so useful. 
All right, so let's think about how to actually start this model. I found I've, I've gotten into the habit of like duplicating ex existing geometry and just extracting the certain vertices that I need from it. And that's what I'm gonna do here. Um, just Shift D to duplicate these pieces and then Control J to join them all as one. Tab into edit mode. And then I'm just gonna start selecting verts um, that I will eventually connect but this is going to create the initial round shape that will align with uh, the body parts that, the car's body parts that uh, are already there. So I've got my verts selected, control I to invert and then de delete those other ones. So now I've got this string of edges. I just need to connect them. There we go. And now I've got a good shape with which I can start from question have you already tried polygons fabric sculpting brushes I have not um, I've not tried those I need to give them a need to give them a try I've not even heard of them actually but um, um, I've probably said this before but a lot of times as a teacher like I, f I feel like I need to be able to teach people from scratch not you know not using purchased t textures necessarily or purchased add-ons. I feel like I have a responsibility to be able to teach from stock blender. So what that means for me is I often will avoid getting those, those cool tools because I'll be dependent on them and, and not everyone, and it'll hurt my trip, my teaching ability, but not to say I need to try them because they're probably very good. Um, question. There you are, Martin. Hello. Uh, how to create faster, um, interesting curves than we use before creating, let me, how to create faster, interesting curves that we can use before creating the 3D model. How to, oh, faster, interesting curves. I'm not, I'm not sure what you mean. Um, I mean, for the interior modeling, this is not gonna be a particularly fast workflow. I would say like it's a little slower because we're kind of creating it as we go. But yeah, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by the question. Matt, you're saying it's just, it's the interiors, that's all it's called, it's just the interior. So maybe it's not called the cab. Okay, um, I'm sorry, Martin, if you can provide maybe a little more clarification, I'd like to be able to answer your question. I ran into this problem last time, or la uh, last week, but. Oh no, your English is, is very good for being Belgian. Um, <laughs> I mean, I can't, I can barely speak Spanish after four years of it in high school. But um, yeah, your English is great. Um, 3D in general can be just like a hard thing to explain textually. But um, yeah, if you can clarify, I would love to be able to answer that. And if anyone else knows what he's talking about, that would be helpful. In a truck that's separate from the trailer, I believe it's called a cab. Okay, that's good to know. Learning new stuff. All right, so what I'm gonna do, if we look at the art here, it looks like this border is kind of what we just extruded, extracted from those other meshes. But in this art, it's much boxier. Whereas in our, in my concept, in Milan's concept that I'm using, it's much more round. So I'm going to have to extend the squareness into a round shape, but then we'll be able to achieve this flatness at the actual dashboard position. So that's kind of where my mind is at. And, um, and so I'm going to extrude, let's go to the top view. I'm going to extrude and then scale. Let's see. How am I going to do this? I'm going to, let me just place my 3d cursor sort of in the middle like this and use the 3d cursor to scale toward. All right. I want this thin ridge on the right side, like where the door is at. I want to keep that thin, but I want to scale these verts toward uh, much, uh, much, um, what am I trying to say? I want to scale them this way. And um, let's see, so I can do that with the cursor still, if I scale in Y, yeah, something like this. Maybe I'll do a little bit at a time Maybe remove these verts from the equation. Whoops. So 
I'm just scaling gradually, starting to flatten out where the dashboard's gonna be. All right, so now we're back to uh, the square shape, which is important for how, our, how people can sit in a car. And then, let's see, I like that for the most part. I, next, I need to cut, let's see, select everything, control in. I'm gonna remove also the solidify modifier. We're not gonna need that. And so I'm still looking in terms of contours, right? Like the major, the main contours, I'm trying to establish those first. So I'm, I'm not thinking as much about the overall mesh as much as just the contours. And from here, I need to cut another edge, maybe from here. So what I'm gonna do is use my knife tool to cut across the mesh to create something. What I'm trying, what I need to do here is lift it up, move it forward. It's creating this edge right there, which you can't see because it's black. Wait, you still can't see it. There we go. That's the edge I'm trying to create right now. And so it's the same kind of thing. I'm gonna gradually move them all up, deselect avert, continue moving up until I get that nice graduated curve. Now I might need to do something like this, modify the geometry just a little bit. Um, okay, it looks like Martin might have clarified. I want to design the interior, but uh, I can draw easily a few lines with the drawing tools, for example, and convert it to 3D lines. Oh, okay, you definitely want to do the grease pencil. Yeah, okay, like people are, are telling you. Um, that's the way you're going to do it. I don't use the grease pencil that way very, like, ever yet. But, um, so I can't really tell you, but check out the grease pencil, that's gonna be the right direction to go. Let's see. I guess I could make this all quads using my K knife tool. Trying to spread them out evenly. Let's see here. So it's kind of like there's a slightly harsh edge right there. You can sort of see it. But then it gets very sharp. Let's see. Um. Sorry, I'm brainstorming this shape. Maybe let's do the eye for, um, what is that called? Insert faces. <laughs> um, oh, whoops. So what I'm doing here is starting to create the separation right there. Now I'm going to deviate a little bit. I'm going to let it hook all the way around. Or am I? Yeah, I think I will. I'm going to let it hook all the way around the vehicle. Or like the front of the dash, sorry. But I want to fix the middle before it gets out of hand. going on there let 
There we go. Weird. Looks like you guys are helping Martin figure that out. Yeah, Martin, I mean, your approach is very artistic and it's a really good idea for, for designing to be able to use the grease pencil. It's super powerful. Um, so yeah, more power to you for, for approaching it that way. It sounds like you're basically trying to create a version of this within Blender to, to like improve your design workflow, which is, which is great. All right, so I've got this piece. I want to separate it now. Again, all of this effort currently is to create and extract this light gray piece. Um, I just see a contour down here that I want to get rid of. I mean, that I want to get rid of, that I want to incorporate now. All right, so with that established, let's try to extract it. Or, well, first I'm going to, um, sorry, um, thinking out loud, I'm going to bring this shape up. Maybe not that far up, something like this. All right, now I'm going to select around the border, control B to bevel it. This is going to begin the separation process. Change the segments to two, and then in that middle one, just Alt S to push it down. All right, so this is creating, <clears throat> trying to create this little shape. And I don't love how this is turning out. I wonder, If I should do the same thing there. Yeah, I think I remember doing that <clears throat> when I was exploring. Um, let me think about it a little bit longer. When you oh, when you inset the select the boundary box and it will ignore the mirror modifier. Oh, wait a minute. When you inset, select the boundary box. Oh yeah, you mean deselect it? Yeah, so it'll so yeah, that's true. It does work, but down here, what like when I was initially in setting it, it had boundaries here and here. So if I were to inset this, well, I guess basically it it was everywhere was a boundary, everywhere was a boundary, and so it didn't it didn't work as far as I remember. Um, but yeah, you're right. That is the the way to go about that. Um, all right, let me try to, I do want to sharpen this first. Let me extract it. So now that I've cut these pieces, uh, I've cut the, the, the construction line, so to speak, I'm going to extract this into its own mesh P by selection. And as long as I don't alter this shape, they should line up very, very well. As long as I don't alter it too much. What I think I'll do here is just instead of bevel, just I'm going to cut these and then spread them out at the end. Oops. All right, that's starting to look similar ish. It's got a, it's got several layers, but um Again, I am just blocking it out for now, but we're starting to establish. Yeah, I don't want to get too deep into the smoothing. Um, also, you'll notice that I, I did alter the shape significantly. So maybe I should add some edges here. Maybe not that edge, maybe just the one. There we go. That matches pretty good. Now, as far as using the grab brush, someone saw this in the live stream from uh, in the time lapse live streams from last week. So I wanted to show that, um, you know, if I need to move these surfaces around, if they're like if they're off like that, 
you know, I could come in here and try and use proportional editing and hit several hotkeys, scroll my mouse wheel to try and get it correct. It's much more intuitive, in my opinion, just to jump into sculpt mode because you can easily sculpt um, poly polygonal geom geometry. It doesn't need to be like a dynamesh or anything. And so, and it doesn't need to have a multi-res modifier. So that it's very easy just to pull verts around very intuitively, artistically. So yeah, uh, that's what that's what that's all about. Um, while I'm thinking about it, you'll notice that there is a gap in between our dashboard object and the rest of our uh, car body. So while I'm thinking about it, let's just extrude that and turn off proportional editing and scale it out using the cursor just so that it uh, intersects with the car body and we don't have to worry about there being um, a gap anymore. And we'll just pull it down till it's inside the car, nice and clean. All right, great. No more gaps. It looks like a pretty solid watertight vehicle. All right, so I've started the dashboard. I've squared it off. Our people are gonna sit here and here. Um, which brings me to how do we address the people? Um, hello, General Ace 55. Um, good to see you. <laughs> Jerry, never even thought of using the grab brush when not sculpting. That, when I first got into Blender, that blew my mind. And I was like, I am sold on Blender for almost only that, being able to, to quickly move around stuff not without being a, a like sculpt object, so to speak. So yeah, um, I'm glad it blew someone's mind because it definitely did that for me when I realized it too. Um, I mean, all the sculpt tools work exactly how they do on high res meshes, except we're just dealing with fewer uh, vertices. So yeah, it works exactly the same. Um, it's, it's so great that it works that way. Um, all right, so now I need to think about the actual people who are gonna be sitting in here. Uh, I, I should do that sooner rather than later. This is the, that process of thinking like a designer. How are people gonna fit? Like, is this a one car sit or a one seat, a one seater sort of vehicle um, or what? And, and the way that I solved it was to get a human in here. I'm using just a simple armature. Um, specifically, let's see. Does Rigavi have to be enabled? It does, I didn't realize that. All right, so enable the Rigify add-on if you haven't already. I'm gonna save those user settings. And shift A armature, basic human meta rig. All right, it's gonna be really small, but uh, I'm using Imperial. And so uh, like Imperial, uh, uh, what do you call it? Imperial digits, no, Imperial scale system, whatever. So I wanna make Essentially, I want to make this guy in the Z dimension. I want to make him six feet. All right, so I'm going to press six feet. I'm going to type that in, and that gives me the scale value 36.371. I'm going to copy that and then paste it. Alt holding or hold Alt and then click and drag down and Control V, and now we get the proper scale according to a height of six feet. And this is how we're going to. Um, yeah, the English system. Units. Thank you, Tebow. Units. Um, all right, so now that we've got our guy scaled, it, like it, I did, I guess, model this, this car to scale because this makes, I think, sense as far as how tall a person would be next to this sports car. Um, so if you haven't modeled your vehicle to scale, try and establish a scale for it. Um, and that'll work out for like for this this uh, meta rig. And so being six foot tall, it's sort of an average, you know, male height, maybe even a little bit taller. Yeah, pasting like that is pretty new to Blender, um, where you can uh, holding Alt. So like if you wanted to make everything the same scale, like you can select everything, hold Alt, and click hold Alt and click rotation and say ninety and everything in the scene will rotate. Everything you have selected will rotate 90 in X. Um, also, uh, clicking and dragging lets you input multiple values at once. Pretty cool trick that was uh, added, I don't know, within the last couple years, I think, of Blender. 
All right, so I've got this quadruped and it doesn't have IK or anything. I'm just gonna leave it the meta rig and simply tab into pose mode, control tab and start posing. Well, I wanna pose this like he should be, but how is that? You know, we gotta look it up. Um, let's look up, let's just say Lamborghini, no, person sitting in Lamborghini. I mean, as an exotic sports car, that's more like uh, what my car is. So if we look it up, we should be able to find, oh, look at this one, this one's great. So this gives us the general posture that our character needs to take, that a human would take inside the vehicle. So um, with that in mind, let's create that. Um, okay, so this rotates the whole thing. And he's pretty laid back. Knees are gonna be up like this. All right, that seems about right. So with that posed, let's think about how low he's gonna to need to be seated. Feet on the dashboard going for a Sunday drive. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that's why we need to, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we could do that, but ideally for the design, we won't, you know, the feet won't have to be on the dash. Um, so that's kind of why we're doing it is, uh, to pose this realistically feet on the dash. That's pretty funny. All right. So try and relax this character a little bit more, make it more, uh, believable. And, you know, I'm not being super precise with it. I just, I just want to get it close. That brings up another point that, um, the, how, how precise do we need to make the character? Or, or beyond that, how precise does the interior need to be? I don't think it matters that much. I just think it needs to be believable. Let me look at my reference again. Just to kind of gauge like where the steering wheel will be. It's like the bottom of it ends up in between the middle of the thigh. Um, so that's, let's go ahead and add that. Might as well, the, the steering wheel itself. Let's hit shift A. We have a Taurus for that. And um, let's see. I think this, if we look back at that reference, this kind of remember the thickness. Uh, where is the thickness? Right here. Doesn't need to be quite so heavy. Let's go to like 24. And, well, that's not what I want. Okay, I think that looks like a decent steering wheel uh, block in. So we've got that made. Let's rotate it in X. You know, just ballpark it according to our reference. Looking, remembering, placing, scaling. Now, how big? See, all these thoughts, you have to, you have to think and, and like solve these issues. They're not given to you for free. Like what is the diameter of a steering wheel? Um, usually this takes us to like a forum or something. Okay, standard sizes, 15 and a half inches. Um, yeah, let's just go 15 inches. That seems middle of the road. Shift A. Um, now, how am I going to? Maybe it'll be better if I clear the rotations and then make the scale. Let's see, make the scale in X. What is it? In X and Y, make those 15 inches. Oh, I was actually really close to 15 inches. Nice. Control A, let's apply that scale. 
All right, and rep uh, reposition it, reorient it. Does that look huge? I think it's too thick still. Alt S in edit mode. Something more like that. Okay. Something is sad. What happened to William? William, what happened to you? Huh. Well, sorry to miss you. Um, William, you have a good one. Thanks for being here for, uh, for the first hour. So... Um, yeah, I'll see you in the thread. Oh, gotcha. Um, glad I'm not, it wasn't actually that sad. I thought there was a tragedy or something that just happened. All right. So we've got, we're starting to block in the pieces that we need to finish modeling. We need, we need these pieces to make sense of our design essentially. And since we don't have blueprints, it's kind of important. Now, where does this place the dashboard? It's actually really far away. So I probably should have set this stuff up beforehand. Um, well, actually, no, it's okay because I can simply move this stuff forward and we can place the steering wheel where it kind of makes sense to place it. Let's look at our reference again, just to ballpark it. I mean, what does that look like? About a forearm, about the length of his forearm is how far the steering wheel sits out or uh, sticks out there. Maybe push it a little bit closer, something like that. All right, this is good. So our dashboard is not intersecting at all. It does seem like the dashboard's maybe a little bit thin where like it would help to, let's see, using the active element I wanna rotate from this vertex might help to bring it down a little bit. All right, so we've got, I think, the most important pieces. We've got a quadruped. Let's duplicate him. Shift D and X. Yeah, let's place him in here. So we've got room for a passenger. And yeah, now that we have the scale of, a, of the quadruped, we know that it, it can be a two-seater car. All right, so I'm going to take my, uh, my uh, armature's quadruped. The armature. I think I called it a quadruped. I saw that in the chat. Um, I'm going to move it using the M key, move it over to layer, what is this? I don't know. The one below one. That is 11, maybe? Um, all right, so they're going to live over there, and the actual model is going to be here. Excellent. Biped. <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry, guys. Brain fart. All right, so we've got our important pieces set up. Let's start blocking out the rest of the interior, which I'm gonna to go to the back side now, and then we'll start blocking out the, the seat. Just looking at the chat, seeing if there's any questions. Man, all this talk of food, I'm starving. I usually, I usually lose track of food on stream days because I'm like rehearsing and creating um, creating the presentation and thinking about what I'm going to talk about. Lunch goes, I miss it, and then we're not done till like four o'clock and I'm starving. So hearing you talk about food, it's kind of painful for me if I'm honest, but I'm going to eat like a, like a pig after this. So that's kind of gross. I'm going to eat like a, a hungry person. So let's uh, extrude back. Now, I, I don't really know what to do back there. I just know I need another segment to push backward. but I'll address that later. It's kind of this exercise of like filling in the gaps as you go, not, not filling it in ahead of time. Um, if that makes sense. Question, what would you eat after the stream? You're gonna make me think about this. Well, what am I gonna eat? 
oh, so many, so many good choices. Okay, so I am a big fan of uh, cheeseburgers, and I think Hardee's Thick Burgers, if you know what Hardee's are, they're also called Carl's Jr. Their Thick Burgers are so good, and I'm really kind of craving that now that I'm thinking about it. But I would love sushi. Um, I just don't want to go sit in a sushi restaurant uh, by myself. Um, but yeah, I love me some sushi. Man, you guys have no mercy. Yeah, I guess I guess cheeseburgers are like, maybe meat is is fairly controversial. Uh, Tim was a vegan, uh, um, so we had conversations about that a little bit. All right, anyway, the back of the vehicle. Let me get back on track. So I'm kind of done with the, not done with the dashboard concept, but for the back seat, I'm going to use that other reference I showed you. Um, where is it? Right here. I'm going to use this. And this might go be slow jumping back and forth. Um, but I'm going to think of like what the simplified shapes are. Carl's Jr. is in an anime? That's bizarre. <laughs> Seriously, like, I got to stop thinking about this. I got to th stop thinking about food in general. Cheese stuffed burgers? Come on, you guys are killing me. Uh, all right, so I'm trying to think of the simplified shapes trying to think about the simplified shapes of this vehicle and what i see is like a very simple like mountain no not that's not uh, like just a ridge you know like a flat surface coming up this way and then a round edge and then flat going back down toward the back that's hard to explain let me just show you what i'm seeing um i'm gonna add a mesh plane alt g right away to move the plane back to the center and just typical habit like setting up for subsur I mean for mirror modifier, delete one half after I cut an edge loop. Sorry, I know that can go pretty fast. And all right, so now I've got my mirror modifier set up and I can start creating this shape. I'm gonna rotate first to oh, I'm gonna turn off also because it's so laggy, I'm gonna turn off background images and that should speed things up. Nice. All right, so I'm going to rotate this shape whoops, to orient according to the back of our character. And then here's the other, the back side of the shape as it just kind of juts down backward. All right, so that's the shape I'm seeing. And then I just need to extrude in X. Until I run into our, uh, until I run into the exterior, and then you know conform it, make it fit in here. So I'm going to scale it down in the back because the car sort of tapers that way, and then this needs to come down, maybe in a little bit. I have to ignore you guys because I know you're talking about food. <laughs> All right, so I've got this shape kind of started. Very, very simplified. So that's what I'm seeing initially. I got to break down the reference back here to just see that shape. And from there, I can start to build all this intricate uh, curvature. All right, so with that, I need to round this over. Well, let me just finish. I'm gonna extrude one more time down. Here we go. Or maybe just, uh, yeah, so I've got the F2 add-on enabled. And I'm just gonna hit F to fill a face there. And so now we've got a solid side to this piece. I'm going to bevel it because it's very, very round. Going back to the uh, reference. Maybe not that round, though. It's also, it's also need to be maybe more of an angle. Keep it quads. I mean, that's really just a hab out of habit. I'm gonna try and make the back side curved like the like this front edge. 
make them a little more consistent. All right. Let's clean this up with its own bevel. Yikes. Got really wonky. Go into local view and let's fix this up. Control three just to see what the shape is like. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. All right, so now let's try and bring the rest of this edge. How, let me think about this. I'm gonna extrude all of this again, E and then down, like move it down in the Z axis. So I'm creating the interior of the like car door, right? Now let's use, where did I put? Okay, the 3D cursor, I'm gonna put that right there. No, let's, how about right there? Um, and then using the 3D cursor, SX to, to give it more of a slant. I wanna make sure that the, maybe not that much of a slant. Yeah, that's probably good right there. But then I need to bring all of these vertices way forward to create the leg room. So how should I do that? Maybe I'm gonna align the 3D cursor to about there and start scaling in Y according to the 3D cursor. Oh, whoops. So as we gradually start to scale this back, it will create the leg room necessary. Let's see, I don't wanna stretch it out too much. So just scaling in Y gradually until I don't need to anymore. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, and keeping these shapes simple, you know, as simple as possible with, in terms of geometry gives us the best chance for smooth curvature. All right, so I think this one needs to be hard based on, again, that artwork. It looks like a pretty hard edge, control B. Okay, so that's not looking too great. It's a little wobbly. And in this case, we'll just use our grab brush. Trying to avoid this upper edge because that will, you know, affect the connection to our other piece of geometry. Yeah, it looks really good. Nice and smooth. Man, it is a really, really hard, like razor sharp edge. Not razor sharp, but unnaturally sharp. I think maybe I need another edge here. Scaling to active to try and bring this forward. Yeah, I'm just trying to make the, um, uh-oh. Just trying to make it a little less harsh. Give it another, give it another ledge down here.
Am I missing any questions, by the way? Kick panels. I don't even think I know what kick panels are. Um, question, question. All right, cool. No questions. But feel free to ask them if you have them. Otherwise, I guess just sit back and enjoy. Um, I'm, I'm expecting to probably do the demo for the rest of the, no, the next 45 minutes probably. So grab some popcorn if you got it. All right, now, see what I mean by confined spaces? Like, you're constantly having to look through stuff. But that's where local view, I guess, comes in really handy. This just seems to get annoying to me. I'm going to remove that for now. Keep it all smooth. And then I keep very slowly modifying this edge. I just I haven't quite gotten to a point that I like. Okay, I think this needs to come down. Okay, now I feel like I've got a good contour all the way around. And I'm just going to uh, control B to bevel. And create a diamond junction. So that hard edge tapers out really nice. Oh, definitely a kink in here though. Yeah, where is that? Oh. Yeah, you can see from the top view, look how far back that is, weird. Nice. I think that's looking good. Very smooth. That's um, crispy, if you will. All right. So we've started to. We're getting somewhere. It's a slow process. You make maybe see like the exploratory nature, uh, gradually building up the shapes that we need to compensate for the design of the interior. But we're coming along. Um, next, let's try the seat. Which in this particular design. I think the seat looks awesome, but it is fairly complex. So it's it's not a quick shape to build, but that's what I want to build next. Um, let's see. Yeah, I guess I'll do the seat. Yeah, we'll do that first. So shift A, add another plane. And this time I'm going to make sure that the origin lines up in the middle of our character. Which I guess I could just shift click the character, shift S, snap selection to active. That would be a way to do it precisely. And I'm going to be building the seat very much from like uh, edge modeling. So I'm just going to delete all vertices except the one. And I'm going to start to essentially outline the shape that we see in the artwork using verts and edges. And add a mirror modifier. And we'll be jumping back and forth between the art. So you can see I've created this shape and then it sort of juts down uh, underneath the back side of the seat. Very interesting shape. I really like his design a lot. It's just, you know, complex to do a little bit. It's just, yeah, it's a complex shape. Um, Wes Burke is in here. The boss man. All right, let's get serious. Now that he's in here, we gotta 
No more talking of food or any of the the unnecessary things. We're just talking modeling. Um, I'm going to select these uh, one vert at a time, hit control B, and you can tell it to uh, do the vertex only, to bevel the vertex only. There we go. Now, is that what the shape looks like? Okay, it looks like it's flat until it starts to get skinny. Okay, so if I enable proportional editing and move this back, yeah, we should be getting pretty close to that shape. Maybe extrude these down a little bit further. <laughs> um, let's see, there's a question. Um, possibly, let's see. Okay, question from Aaron. Sorry, I missed that. Um, when we're finished, when we finished our interiors, should, should they be, uh, let's see, should they be uploaded to Sketchfab, Sketchfab separately, or should we combine it with the exterior or either? Um, I would say do both. I would like to see, I would like to see them both. I mean, it'd be cool to see it within context. Like, uh, for example, if we unhide everything, oh, wow, look, already a problem. We got to push the head down. It's cutting through the ceiling. Um, but on Sketchfab, it'd be nice if, you know, like in, in Blender Render, I can add a material, um, turn on transparency, make the alpha like 0.5 or something. Maybe a little bit more. Um, while I'm at it, let's just... Uh, does um huh that doesn't really seem to be working I was trying to make the uh, the highlight much sharper but apparently that doesn't do anything what Okay, so maybe it, yeah, I don't know what that was about. Whatever. I was trying to make it look more like glass and a little bit tighter spec, but anyway, so um, I kind of like to see it in this context where you can see through the windshield and, and catch a glimpse of what the interior looks like. I would say upload a version like this, and then if, if you're willing, like upload upload a separate with just the interior or, or maybe like pieces hidden. Okay. Maybe like the equivalent of this, something like that. Like if your roof needs to be removed, somehow I would like to be able to see in like as unobstructed as possible. Um, hope that makes sense. A couple more questions. I'm sorry. I missed these from Omar. Have you ever found a use for alt B? What is Alt B? Whoa, I have seen this before, but I completely have never used it. <laughs> My gosh, it's like a viewport Boolean. That's crazy. That is crazy. What an effect. No, I personally have never used that. Can you show at the end of the class how to relax and smooth some curve with sculpt mode. I use smooth vertex. I think you have some tips. Oh, um, yeah. I don't really have a spot. Um, I think I know what you're talking about. Like sometimes, uh, bummer. I don't really have a spot to do that. Let's try this. So in principle, like you know, you can select these verts. Let's just let's just select a few less. Uh, 
in principle, you know, you can, you have two options for like relaxing vertices. You can smooth the vertex, which works well, but sometimes it doesn't and you want to more artistic control. You can just sculpt or you use the smooth brush holding shift. So I, that's what I believe you're talking about. Um, but yeah, I, to, to best present it, I probably should find a mesh that has like pinching and try and solve it with that. Um, all right, so I think that's all the questions I've been missing. Uh, yeah, the Alt-B thing, that was kind of wild. Um, all right, back to the headrest. So I've outlined the major contour. Let's, let's continue the contour into the next piece, which is the base, which had a shape something like this. I might be able to hide, whoops, that object is on the wrong layer. Might be able to hide. Oh, a lot was on that layer. Well, just one more piece. So I'm gonna hide my people, my armatures, and try and create this shape just purely by looking, by like looking and remembering and applying. Okay. This is that freeform edge modeling, just in the in the wild wild west of 3d space pure 3d space moving verts around part of the key with this approach is the is like being willing to move around a lot like orbit your camera a lot all right that's pretty close let's see Let's bring my people back to see if I need, if it's fitting in the tush. Actually, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, while I'm at it, to make sure that the, the seat is not too wide, let's go ahead and add another mirror modifier. But this time we're going to use a piece like this. So we're building both chairs. Yeah, I think that I might make it a little bit thinner. All right, now one of the harder things in my opinion is is like uh, filling in the gaps. It, with the body, it wasn't that it wasn't as hard as as these shapes. These are just very funky shapes. Um And right now they're way too simplified. So maybe what I'll try is just, so one thing that I, I hate when it comes to, or I try to avoid is this kind of thing, like a star junction on the border. Like I, I can't stand that stuff generally. Um, So, uh, one way to get rid of it though is selecting all these faces and trying an inset. Which is not doing. What? Would anybody know why an inset doesn't work? Do I need thickness or something? That was weird. I don't need thickness quite yet. Anyway, I, the whole point was to have the, uh, no boundary wasn't on. I checked that, but yeah, it wasn't working. 
You guys are making me second guess. Let me try this again. See? Yeah, it's not working. Oh my gosh. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. You guys are right. I'm 100% wrong. Boundary simply wasn't on. You have, you have my permission to get out of here. I don't know anything after that. Good gracious. Good gracious. <laughs> See you, people. I'm out. All respect has been lost. Good night. All right. So the whole reason I wanted to do that was just to get rid of, um, have like an interior edge, an interior ring. That's just going to make the geometry work a little bit nicer. I think these also needed to be... Um, let's cut a few more edges and I want to push them in to actually make them more like bucket seats. So from all angles, I'm just trying to keep an eye on like what what these edges are, what, what kind of shape these edges are making. I mean, maybe that goes without saying, but um, there we go. I think that looks pretty decent. Control three, see what that looks like in the broader context. All right, so the bucket seats are definitely not deep enough. As we can see, nowhere, nowhere near deep enough. Push them back until we can see the rear end of our of our little armature. Go back to local view and then clean up. My goodness, was it really that deep? That didn't seem right. Did I go too far? Yes. <laughs> All right, that's pretty good. Now let's fill in the gap on this shape. See if there's any extra information. That's a bucket seat. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not as deep in here. So I must have I must have this wrong. That seems more correct. Maybe the seat just needs to be moved like this. There we go. Good thing we have these little mannequins in here. That's They uh, prove to be more helpful. I'm going to separate the pieces here and add... Do I want to separate them? Take it back. I don't want to separate them quite yet. The reason I don't want to separate them is it could get pretty confusing if I separate everything because there's just going to be a ton of pieces and the potential for selecting the wrong thing a lot. That's kind of how my mind works. Like the seat to me should be its own object by itself. I mean, it's, it's there's not a problem with it being separated, but the way my mind organizes my 3D scene internally, I want to keep that as one object. So... That's just preference. Um, there should be, I guess, a, a bucket element to uh, the, the headrest as well. I love this. That's a bucket seat. <laughs> Kent skulls. Uh. Um, fifth time you start over, Tebow, you're talking about the cabin. Um, it's, it's a different animal to do the interior. It's, 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 yeah, it's something, it's something unique. That's for sure. But it is very rewarding. So when you stick with it and you get that, 
that cool result at the end, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be worth it. Um, but let me okay. What was I doing with this? I want to fill it in. Let's start down here. Just E, extrude and move it to the center. Ooh, I don't want that to be a star junction. So at this point, I think I'm just going to start like creating the geometry piece by piece. Basically like a retopology without a mesh underneath it. Flipped the wrong way. Let's go into local view for this too, just to make it a little easier. So I know all this geometry is going to be really bad, like in terms of the position of the vertices, but the topology will be good. All right. So now that I've got some geometry, let's use the smooth of vertices option. And now I can start to inset it, which I might do with the Alt-O proportional editing. Okay, so here's a trick. Um, so what I wanna do, I wanna push all these verts back very smoothly, but I don't want to push back the, the border at all. And so what we can do is simply go to vertex mode and hide the border. And now we can use Alt S and then Alt H and it, it leaves that border completely intact exactly where I had it. So that's kind of a fun little trick. Um, yeah, I think we're getting close. But here's what I'm talking about, like, see how bad that geometry is? It's all because of that star junction right there. So let me... Okay, so you you mentioned bucket headrests. Um, keep in mind, well, I mean, so it's I, in my mind, it's like being... I mean, that's kind of what I'm interpreting from this art, is that the headrests kind of encapsulate the head just slightly. But also keep in mind that we are, I haven't said this, so not that you should have known, but um, we're creating the shell of the seat. We're also going to add the cushions themselves on top of the shell. And so the shell should be a little bit further back um, indented to make room for the cushions. And that's gonna be true for the headrest as well. Um, all right, so now that I've got that, all those meshes selected, all those faces selected, Oh, here is another example where I can't use boundary. Remember, we did this on the dashboard and I had to fix the, the middle. So that's, that's why I can't, um, the same thing happened on the dash and someone mentioned it. Uh, I don't know if, if y'all remember that, if you guys remember that. All right, a little bit cleaner. And again, you know, some, some of these pinches kind of bother me. Well, frankly, all pinches bother me, but it's the shell and it is going to be covered by cushions. So there's a good chance that these pinches will also be covered by cushions. Um, at this point, uh, I'm going to select everything, hit E to extrude and Alt S to push it backward. I'm not using the uh, subs or what do you call it? The uh, solidify modifier, just because I don't want to. Let's see if I can, if this is a good way, reason to use uh, smooth vertices. Not really. All right, so we've got the, sh wait, is this even, yeah, this is still correct, I think, according to the art. 
those pieces are coming along. Um, let's see. So I've got 20 minutes left. I did want to cover some other things. So that was this, uh, that was specifically asked. All right, haven't missed any questions yet. All right, so I'm gonna save this version two, but I'm gonna jump forward to where I was earlier today. Is that here? Nope. Here we go. So this is where I got to earlier today from from playing around. Um, essentially the same thing you've already seen. We've got our seat. We've got the dashboard a little more fleshed out, but very similar. Um, but I wanna jump forward to show some uh, sculpting of the, the seat cushions. We'll add the seat cushions and then sculpt some like leathery details. Someone asked for that specifically um, in the thread. So I figured I'd do that. But, um, you know, here's some stuff you haven't seen, like just turning that very simple, simple shape into some extra things. Uh, if you can look at this and remember it and now look at the art, I mean, it was based on this. It's not a one for one match, but, but it was based off of it. And, and this shape right here actually turned out really interesting to me. It was very difficult. It was one of those things in the, in the, in the line art that I didn't really understand. You can kind of see how these edges jolt up like that, which I thought was really interesting, but how to connect it to everything else <clears throat> was a bit of a mystery. Um, but, you know, being this exploratory edge modeling method, you can end up finding some cool um, shapes. And this is what, this is an example of that. I thought it turned out pretty interesting. Maybe put like, I mean, what could this be? Practically speaking, a speaker maybe, maybe a little speaker would be here. I don't know, I'm kind of reaching. Maybe this is a speaker, um, but it looked cool. It was in the concept, so I kept it. And anyway, all right, so adding some seat cushions. Let's see here. I should probably look for some. Oh, wait, we actually, in the concept, we have some seat cushions outlined. So, yeah, I'm going to use these shapes, this, uh, this quadrant, you know, quadrant one, two, three, and four. I want to use that. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create that. And this is gonna be essentially a retopology exercise. So let's duplicate this because it has all of my origins and um, mirror modifiers set up. I'm gonna duplicate it, just select a vertice, vertex, whew, and remove everything else. And um, look at this, remember it, turn on face snapping. And one more time, refresh me. There we go, just creating, outlining the same contour we see in the art. It looks pretty close. This is maybe a little too far down. So we've got the outline now to fill it in. Let's see. Just trying to get a mesh, essentially. Trying to connect them. And then we'll bother with uh, the quality here in a minute. Huh. I 
gets it, the problem. It's kind of hard making it get really skinny here in the middle because I like don't have enough geometry. I'm just going to snap them back to the surface. Let's see here. Because another thing that I want to keep in mind with this is I want it to be very even topology because when I start sculpting, that's going to help me ensuring that it's even and not stretched out polygons at all. So that's why I'm like adding new edge loops here and there. Yeah, like down here, they're super stretched. No bueno. There's that Spanish for you. All right, now that's looking much more even. Let's see. Maybe one more right there. Okay, so we've got this piece of geometry. Um, I want to, instead of insetting, I think I want to, let's show you another trick. So I really want just to extrude, and I want to do the opposite of inset. I want to extrude it, whoops, I meant for a grease pencil, I want to extrude it out away from this edge. And so the way that I, I do that sometimes is, you know, obviously I can't extrude and scale because like that doesn't work. It doesn't create the right geometry. So what I can do is hit, is select everything E to extrude, Alt S to thicken it. Wait, what's going on? What is going on? There we go. I don't know what that was about. So I'm going to thicken it to the underside. And then I can cut an edge and Alt S. Does that make sense to you guys? That's actually a pretty useful trick. Just trying to snap it to the surface. These got away from me a little bit. There we go. And then once I have the shape I like, we can remove that back side. I'm just gonna cut another edge and remove the verts. There we go. <laughs> I'm not sure what you guys are talking about, but it looks kind of fun. Um, let me, oh yeah, I need to smooth, wait, what's going on here? Must have duplicated somehow. How many edges are there? weird somehow I had like three edges on top of each other all right anyway so now I've got let's get back to the seat cushion I only have 10 minutes um, okay yeah this does give me the opportunity also to add some holding corners wait don't want the vertex to be dissolved Add this one too. Look at the artwork. Okay, everything else seems actually. 
Actually, this one does not need to be a holding corner. All right, so now that we've got the base shape, we just need some thickness, and then we can start sculpting the cushion itself. Extrude, push it out with Alt-S. Let's see, okay. And then smooth the vertices. All right, so that is how we have the beginning of the cushion. I really wanted to do the other side too. Maybe I will, I'll do it real quick. It's a much simpler shape. I feel like I'm really missing out on something fun in the chat. Oh, Logan, what are holding corners for? So, you know, the idea of holding edges is to sharpen an edge. Well, holding corner sharpens the corner. So without these, if I didn't add those holding corners, then this would not be sharp. It would be round, which ironically, I think I actually like that better. But I thought I wanted it more sharp. Um, so that's what the holding corners are for. All right, so we got that shape. Um, your question actually made me um, fix a problem. I like it. All right, let's uh, add this shape real quick. I think that's pretty close. How many verts do we have here? 19. So um, if I add one more vert, we will have 20 and it should be able to use the, how's that for math? Um, but now that I've got an even number, 20 uh, verts, I should be able to hit spacebar and find grid fill. Since this is just a simple round shape, There we go, that looks pretty even. And from here, let's see, space it out a little bit better. All right, I'm gonna inset this time. And now extrude all of this E to extrude, Alt S, turn off snapping. And now smooth the verts. Nice, right, making a little bit of progress. All right, so all of that setup was really just to um, show you the sculpting of car leather. Let's see if we can't find race car seat. Let's see if we can't find like a leather one that's in the ballpark of what ours is. That looks like it would be a good one. Not a lot of these are leather, interestingly enough. How about this? It's not a race car seat, but Okay, yeah, this has given me, I think, the some information that I want. Open image in new tab. Also, something to think about is this one can work too. Let's 
So th something to consider is like whenever we add wrinkles to leather, generally that's going to mean age uh, as opposed to new. So this is like a brand new chair and there's not many wrinkles. There's a little bit up here, um, but in general, it's very, you know, part of it being a new chair and a well-made chair is it's not going to have those wrinkles. Um, so I wonder if I can find like a used one. This one looks somewhat used. Wait, no, it doesn't. Oh, well, if I can't find the reference, I'll just wing it. Uh, I'll just wing it. Um, we'll just give a general like leathery feel to it and and see what happens. All right, so what I would do for this is add a I would, well, I need to collapse some of the modifiers, I guess. So let's get rid of that. Alt. I'm going to do one level. I'm going to undo that and add one level of subdivision. Alt C. I'm just going to collapse all this down. Okay. So now at this point, this becomes the new base mesh. Very even since it is an applied subsurface model. And then we'll go to multi resolution, subdivide. I'm going to need to subdivide a bunch of times. I'm going to go to four, see how many. So we're at two million faces. That should be enough for us to start sculpting. Let's just go to local view on these objects. Grab my pin. And by the way, it definitely was not a dumb question. The whole like holding corners. And based on the little bit of reference we were able to find, it seems that like sharp corners in the leather, that's probably a good candidate for what would have some, some like leathery, uh, leathery uh, wrinkles, sorry. Brain fart. And let's go to sculpt mode. I'm gonna use my crease brush. Make the, uh, I like to make the default behavior add instead of subtract. And using the crease brush, initially to define some of these curves, then I'm going to go back with the inflate brush, kind of plump them out, and just alternate between those two brushes. And in the middle of this like wrinkle cluster is going to be the most intense. So I want my creases to be deeper up in here and then gradually fade out deeper in here and then fade out, maybe even pinch it just to make sure that it's nice and tight. I think this is enough geometry. All right, so we got a little bit of wrinkle pattern, maybe extend it just so it's not so, so perfectly plush. I mean, maybe start to add some like random like uh, I'm using my inflate brush just to randomly like change, like an un add an undulation to the surface, then go back and smooth it out, holding shift. I don't know, I'm a bit experimenting here. But yeah, like there's not a lot of, I mean, just the leather would be pulled so tight around these corners Let's add another one in here. But the crease should probably be deepest right on the edge where it connects to the chair. So I'm going to pinch that up and smooth out. I to uh, inflate. And yeah, that's going to be our pattern. That's going to be our method. And these don't look great. So maybe smooth them out. <laughs> I feel like a 
a race car chair, leather chair expert would look at this and be like, yeah, that just means they didn't make the chair very well. <laughs> a good chair wouldn't have any of that. Uh, maybe there would be like this kind of number. I'm going to turn off symmetry. I mean, at this point, the chair has been used a lot. But for you guys doing um, older cars, this makes perfect sense. So, all right, it's four o'clock. That's two hours. Anyway, that was not a lot of seat sculpting, but I hope, I mean, I would literally apply this same thing everywhere. Like there's not going to be, the only other thing is maybe if you wanted to add some sort of stitch pattern. I get, let me do that really quick. Um, I'm going to enable, uh, wait a minute, stroke. What am I looking for? Um, smooth stroke. And like, let's just add a pattern here, a stitch pattern, enable symmetry. Something like that. We would certainly want to pinch it really tight. And inflate. And the inflate does two things. It's, it pulls the surface really, really close together and also gives the, the, like, the lip on either side of the stitch. But you don't want like that black artifact, so we'll lightly smooth that area. And that actually looks pretty good as stitches. So that's kind of how I would add stitching, I suppose. But, uh... Oh, that's why it was so heavy. It, it was double. Like, I didn't need any of this. And sorry, I'm, re I'm setting up that mirror modifier again. There we go. All right, so that's that's going to be the, the the live stream on the interiors. I hope I hope that was helpful. Um, it was fun, man. I, I I tell you, like the interior is genuinely interesting. It's a fun task. It is it is. Uh, I would say it's more difficult than the exterior, in my opinion. But um, I mean, I think this car is going to look really really cool once it's done. So I'm going to continue this week modeling it myself and, and by the end have like a finished car, hopefully. Um, hope you guys do the same. Um, and let's see, any other last minute questions? Would you retopologize the sculpt you did or just leave it like this? Good question. So I've kind of been modeling this car to be like high resolution, renderable in Blender. Um, and if I'm going to stay in Blender, I will just leave the multi-res enabled and then I can like disable it for the viewport. But then whenever I render with this button enabled, it will render the actual geometry. I think that's a really powerful tool, powerful feature of Blender. Whereas like if you compare to ZBrush, like you have to export a displacement map. You have to lay out the UVs in order to get that geometry displacement back in Maya or Blender or 3ds Max. But with Blender having the sculpt tools right here in inside, I can have that actual geometric detail um, in its raw form, like stored in a modifier. So I would leave it like that. Now, if I wanted to export over to a game engine, I would retopologize everything for a low res and then bake all the detail to normal maps. Um, but I'm just planning on leaving it like this for for high for ultimate high res fidelity. Um, awesome. Great demo. You learned three useful new tricks. That's great. Man, three. That, that, that's pretty good. Um, question, will there be a game art class one day or a substance texturing or an environment? I mean, yes to kind of everything. Like 
I, I do, I definitely plan on doing a game art class. I mean, that's the beauty of the classes is, is like we have such a big library of content that we can pick and choose and piece together different courses to serve as the, the foundation of the class, but, but a different topic, so many different topics uh, can, can employ those courses. So I'm um, definitely going to do, going to do those, uh, v like a ton of different types of classes. Uh, I'll probably pull you guys at the end of the class, uh, this class to see, you know, what we'll do next uh, after the August class. But um, sky's the limit, man. I love classes. I love this format. I'd love to keep uh, doing them. Uh, could you classify Piero? I honestly don't think I could because uh, making a, sh well, I don't want to say Piero specifically. No, there was so much work to be done in that class that I, it's not really fair to say, um, okay, I'm going to grade you based on finishing a short film this month, you know, like maybe do a multi-month class, but then I don't know, that's really reaching for the stars and it, a lot can go wrong and people can get confused and frustrated at multiple points along the way. That would be too difficult to solve. So that's probably too big of a chunk to turn into a class, but I don't know. Anyway, I want to let you guys go. It's been, it's been a pretty long stream, but, uh, Okay, so you definitely want a short film class. We will see. We will see about that. I'll keep it in mind. But that's a pretty big. That's a pretty big ask. Uh, awesome. Well, thanks for being here. Um, I had a lot of fun. Hope the demo was relevant to you guys, and I look very forward to seeing your interiors. Uh, I'll see you in the class thread. Present as always. So now I'm just gonna wait several seconds because I know OBS cuts off the last several. <laughs>